Hi everyone, this is Eran Stern for Artbeats.com with another creative tutorial, which will be actually part one of a two-part series. So I thought this time I might show you something a little bit different. I'm not going to go to step-by-step, step, uh, the step-by-step step direction, which we're going to build every single element but more to show you a workflow of how you can actually design, think about the idea, and then search for the footage you need. And after that, try to composite it inside After Effects. So there will be a lot of After Effects here, don't worry. But before we will start the juicy part inside After Effects, let me share with you the workflow that I took in order to create it and think about it. So actually the work here starts in Photoshop where I got the basic brief for my client which is very very simple as you can see. It says there is a new sitcom about a relationship and we need to do a 10 second spot. So I scratch my head, the back of my head actually, and thought what can I come up with? because in this case, there was no budget to go and shoot nothing. So everything here will rely upon the use of uh, stock footage, which is the strongest part, of course, for Artbeats, I mean, for using the Artbeats clip. But first you have to come up with some kind of an idea. So I stare at this word, you know, the relationship word, and suddenly I noticed that he made like a, whatever, a stroke here under the word relation, but neglect to emphasize the word ship. And why won't I build my promo around some kind of a ship? And then from this idea, I kind of develop a very, very simple storyboard, which I want to share with you before we will even begin designing or compositing, designing and compositing, I should say. So here is my five simple scenes. Let me just enable the first one and let's just see what I come up with. So I think to myself, well, scene number one should be something that looks like this, a very dry desert scene with clouds. The clouds should be moving and then a couple of birds in the sky, and then a biker just start to, of course, roll across the scene. Okay, so very simple. Next scene is this biker actually is pointing the way of an old ship or to the old ship. So this ship is just tracking him. So this means, of course, that the ship is out of its place, it's no longer in the water, it's traveling through the desert stones here, and just following this biker, and they are moving from left to right. All right, interesting, let's see. Let's move to the third one. The third picture is actually what happens next. The ship is making some kind of a crack in the land, and the biker just wanders out of the scene. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, there is also some kind of a flock of birds flying in the sky. Okay, how this will end up for a program or for a promo about relationship? Well, very simple. This will be a picture that zooms into a couple living room, which means that some kind of a living room, and let's highlight scene number four. And you can see here that basically I just wrote down crash zoom. So we are moving, we are transforming from the scene, the surreal ship scene that we just built to a guy and a girl, which are just standing in the living room. And she's actually pointing him how to hang this picture. So there is some kind of a relationship, maybe an argument, I don't know, something like this. And at the end, she is happy, he is happy, he is looking at her, there is love around, and of course the title of the program is Forming. 
So this is the story that I came up with, something about a sheep and a relation. So a relationship, how clever it is, very. So after coming up with this idea, which sounds like a very ridiculous one, but should suffice, it should be funny, I think, if we will manage to composite everything in some kind of a realistic form. I thought that, okay, I should find some footage in order for me to build it. So I marked myself, there is a footage of a desert, some kinds of birds, we need biker, of course we need the old sheep, and obviously we need a couple hanging a picture in their living room. Not the most obvious list you might think of, but you will be surprised how easy it is to look for this kind of difference and various footage in the Outbits website. And this is the next step which I want to show you. Okay, so let's hop over into the Outbits website. And here there's a search column that you can use, a search window, I should say. So let's start with the obvious one, with the first thing. Let's just type down biker and let's just press search in order for the search to engage. And as you can see, we've got 117 clips found. Now, obviously, we need some kind of a biker which we can isolate from its background. So not all of these clips will do for our task. I also, in my case, in most of my cases, in most of the cases, I like to just search for the HD stuff or HD and above. So here I can narrow my search to HD, which doesn't help so much because most of the clips in the Artbeats website are HD. So I might add in a comma and let's try to see if there's biker which is traveling in the desert or biking or cycling in the desert. So this narrows it down to 27 clips, which I think it is much easier to look. So I can just look here and see nothing is really matching my description. Let's try page number two. And these are more likely to work. Once you hover with the mouse, on top of one of the clips, you can get a real-time preview to see if this is something that you may consider to use. And of course, at the beginning, it starts to look promising, but it's not what I'm looking for. Let's try this one. And let's try to see. I think that from this point here, we may have enough footage in order for this clip to be used in our scenario, in our surreal scenario. So. The next step that I will usually take is add this to my bin. And in order to do so, you need to be registered into the Artbits website. So it's a very easy procedure, but however, I just added this clip to the bin. And now at the top of the page, you can look into your clip bins. Of course, you can create several bins if you like, but here you can see that I've already did few searches here and this is the clips that I came up with for this spot. This will be the desert background. So there is a nice moving, very gentle moving clouds. And then I found two old ships, which I'm not really sure which will work best. So if you want to see a better preview, you can either click on one of them or I will show you in a moment, you can even download a full HD comp in order for you to check if it is working in some scenarios of tracking or stabilizing or rotoscoping and it will do everything here. So this is a good candidate. Although at the end, I've decided to go with this one because I felt that this has more movement and more energy. And I think that this will work better. Of course, you can see there are two more clips for the biker. At the beginning, I started to think that I might as well try to see if there is a clip without a background, which will be the best if there is. And they've got thousands of them. But for this scenario, I haven't found anything that is suitable. So I marked those two clips. I thought that I might get back to them and maybe see if I can use them. But at the end, I decided to go with this one. And of course, I've got also a nice flocking birds just you know 
to give the shot at the end a little bit more energy, a little bit more of a nature feel. And here, this is the main shot for part two. So I'm not going to deal with it now. I just want to show you that if you will click here, you get a better preview, which you can judge if it is better for you or not. And you can, of course, download here the full HD composition. Of course, it will come up with a watermark, but it will be a full res version of the clip, so you can test it, you can see if the tracking goes well. And of course, what I did is download the full version and actually used it in my storyboard just to outline to my client that the scenario will work and it helps me to actually explain it and sell the shot or sell the idea at least. So this is a very easy and important step which in most of the tutorials that I did for Adbit, I skipped this step because to me it looks very obvious. But I thought that showing you this maybe ridiculous idea at the beginning without explaining the stages that I took in order to create it might be a little bit out of context. And I wanted to show you how basically am I thinking, uh, what, am, what am I doing in order to create this kind of... Uh, as I said, ridiculous composition that might come up, I don't know, maybe interesting. So now after I've collected everything, I downloaded the clip and import them into After Effects. And now finally we are ready to start to work with them inside After Effects. Okay, so in part number one, we will create our desert scene. And then, of course, part number two will be the rest of the game here. So in order to save us a little bit of time, I already placed the first shot in the first timeline here. And this is our ship with all its glory. Before we will try to isolate this ship from its background, because remember, we need to composite this on top of our desert scene. I just want to show you the clip and the reason is that when you're doing something like this it's always important to take a moment and watch the clip just learn see what it consists of what is the movement what is the perspective if there is a shift in colors all these sorts of things that might come up when you're starting to composite and if you are planning ahead then you have more, um, I guess it will be easier and you will not have to work twice. So you see that it is quite stabilized and it's quite all right, but if we will use it like this, it will be very difficult to isolate it. Of course, first reason is that it is moving, it's not staying on the screen. So the first thing that I think we should do is basically stabilize it, stabilize it in place. And then we should be able to just prepare several masks on the first frame. And if we are lucky and the stabilized result will be sufficient, those masks should hold for most of the other stuff. And I know there's people here inside the ship and they are moving from side to side so we have to tackle this as well but first things first let's try first to stabilize it so since I'm working in version CS 5.5 I thought that this is a great opportunity to check how good is the new warp stabilizer so in order to do so let's select the clip and then from the animation menu, I'm going to choose Stabilize Motion. Now, the Warp Stabilizer is basically some kind of a black box, which means that it does all its magic automatically. Most of it will be in the background, which means that we can now free to work. We can, if you like, scrub this timeline or work on another composition maybe prepare another element and then in the background After Effects will keep continuing to analyze the clip. However, you can watch it if you like. There is also an estimated time, how much time it will take. And this is all we are working 
from the beginning until the end, everything will be done here at full HD resolution. So just in order for you to get a sense about the speed of things and how things are moving along. Instead of smooth motion, which is the default result, already I'm going to ask it to give me no motion. And this means that after the first stage will be done, the second pass will try to identify my object here, which is the old chip, and try to fix it in the background or in the scene without any movement at all. Okay, so I fast forward in time to the stage where the analyze has been finished. And let's just run preview the result. Remember, I told it that I want to remove all the motion in the video, so no motion at all. And you can see actually the result is quite impressive. Although we do have some kind of artifacts in the water, the ship itself is quite steady and looks like it is rock solid in the place that it started its journey. So this means that we can now try to rotoscope it, try to cut out the shape of the ship and we should get a very impressive result. Now the easiest way to do it is to create yourself a new solid and I will stick with the gray for now, make sure it's a comp size. Then press T, change the opacity to 50%, and then take your pen tool and very gently start to draw your shape. Now you have to be very close and you also have to be a little bit patient because this will take a little bit of time. However, remember that you can do it with all the time in the world because you only need to do it for this frame and then for the rest of the frames we might need to just modify few of the masks. Now I'm not going to make you watch me do this kind of uh, tedious and a little bit boring task. Instead what I'm going to do is just get rid of this dark solid and unshy my two layers here. Now I'm going to drag this layer, which is the stabilized boat, to the back of the stack here. Just, just frame this result. And here I've got already a pre-made mask layer. That if I will press M to see the mask, we can see that I already took care of everything. Meaning that I have a couple of masks that describe the main ship shape. Then I did a different mask to describe the waves. And then I also cut out two masks for the people. And there is also one mask for the hole here. Now, in order to make it work, I needed to modify these masks a little bit. So every 10 frames or so, and in my case, every second or so, I just placed keyframes in order for this mask to follow it. But it was very, very easy, and it frankly didn't took me more than five minutes. So let's say that we are now 10 minutes after the start of the whole work. So five minutes to stabilize it, and then five minutes to mask it. Doesn't look like a lot to me. Now when the mask is done, you can select your clip, and then choose for it the alpha mat and it should create your transparency pixels for you. However, you can see that the strings are not included. If I'm just going to solo this one, or in fact, let me just remove the track mask and we can see that there are also strings here, which, I mean, you can try to mask them with masks, but I think a more logical way is just using the After Effects built-in shape tools. So just make sure that nothing is selected. And this is what I did in this case. I just place few strings here, which follows more or less the strings that I have here in the video frame. So on their own, this is what they look like. It's just few strings 
uh, the same color of the rope in the video, right? But once I'm going to combine everything together and let's re-enable the track map, it's basically going to look very, very convincing. And you do have to remember that we are going to take this boat, scale it down, and then move it across the screen. So with all the treatment that we are going to do, such as motion blur and movement and animation, we will probably get away with it very, very easily. But this is, of course, only the first step. Okay, so we've got the ship out of the way. And let's try to do something similar with the biker. We also need to remove it from its scene, from its background. First of all, as you see, the clip is far too long than what we actually need. So we need to identify the spot that we want to start this clip from. So let's say something from here. I will trim this to its in point and maybe just before he's going to disappear in the ground. And I'm not going to worry about the ground is just not so much visible here because I'm going to place him basically on a similar, if not the same uh, color. So it will look good, I think. All right, as soon as I have this, we can actually trim the whole comp. So we will have only this to work with. Now, there are a couple of ways to remove him from the background, but I think that the easiest one will be to use the color range under the king, the color range effect. So I'm going to drop it over here and then I'm going to sample this background and then you can either do it here, just adding colors, or you can take your sampler and just put it here. And you have to get to the place where you are happy. It's not going to be a perfect key, but it will be good enough for what we need. So I know there are holes here and obviously we don't have the best information here in the wheels, but trust me, it will be more than enough. This guy will be scaled to around maybe nine or 10% of its size. So let me just show you in this size, all right, something like this, you can hardly see that there is, or maybe even 20% that there is a missing uh, information. It, looks quite good but before doing the scaling and the positioning we just need to clear this in a little bit so for that just grab your regular mask tool and you know just do something like this in order to hide what you don't need and of course as always we need to place few keyframes let me just change the color of the mask it will be a little bit more obvious here so i'm going to open it then record keyframe for the mask path. And once again, I'm going to skip forward in time to the place that I already took care of this mask. And then I think that we should also trim this comp to just be around the area that we will need. It's going to help us a lot in the next stage. All right, so how we can do this? The easiest way is select this icon, the region of interest, and then just marquee around this guy. Make sure that he will not leave this frame. We can even go a little bit lower. And then as soon as you have a nice framing, you can go to the composition menu and ask it to crop comp to region of interest. And this will leave you with a very nice and small comp to work with. Now, if we are here, let's, I'm not going to stabilize him, although it is a good idea. I just feel that, you know, the bumpiness in the movement here is something that I like to keep, but I do want to rotate it a little bit. So we will be more or less on the horizon line. So I press R, then I'm holding down command or control just in order for the rotation to be a little bit more controlled and precise. And as always, I might need to do a little bit of modifications just to make sure that my key is good. And this is it. This is basically the second step. 
Okay, so for the last step, which is combining everything together, I already have a composition which I'm going to walk you through and not do everything from the beginning. It will be a little bit more quicker and I promise to explain everything that I did. So in this composition, we have first our background and this is the desert scene that we saw before. I want to initiate a run preview because I want you to pay attention to some kind of a, maybe a minor problem that we have here. And this is the light. The sun at some point is probably going to be blocked by one of the clouds. And this makes our beautiful ground change its color. So as soon as you get this kind of behavior, you either need to match all the rest of the elements to this kind of atmosphere change or try to fix it. I choose the easiest way, which is try to fix it. So I just duplicated another copy, mask it over here, and then I place the exposure effect. I'm going to press U so you can see there are two keyframes here just for the ground. And I try to compensate by raising the exposure only for the second part of the clip. And I think that it came out pretty nice. So now if I'm going to run preview it, we can see that there is a problem. There is some kind of a light shift, but it's much less obvious. And it will help us just to make the scene a little bit more constant. Okay, so this is the first easy part. Now I placed my biker after I cut everything. And as I promised, it's scaled down, so I scale it to around 15%, convert it to a 3D, and by that, what I did is basically make him, or made him, just cross the scene here. So this is the first stage. Of course, there is also a simple level adjustment here, just in order for the color to match a little bit better. And you see that we've got a very decent, if not perfect, match between those two layers. Now, the second thing that I thought that we should add back to the scene is, of course, the shadow for the biker. And if we are imagining that the sun is probably just on top of him, the shadow for both the biker and the ship should be just touching the surface here and very, very shallow. So in order to create it, I just duplicated the cycler and I'm going to hide this effect. Just let you watch it as is. So this is another copy of the cycler. And what I did is added the transform effect and the transform effect basically allows you to just create a transformation without opening the transformation here because here I already have keyframes in place. This layer is 3D. I didn't want to mess with it. I figured out that the easiest way to do it was just to uncheck the uniform scale, then create a very, very, let me just think that we will go like 100% so we can see the shadow on the ground. And of course, using this position slider here, you can just marry it to the place it should be. Now, this is the same image. So in order to fill it with color, I just added the fill effect with a black color here. Very simple. And on top of this, I added also a displacement map effect, which takes the displacement from the background. And this is just a very, very minor effect. You probably wouldn't notice it, but, you know, just make sure that the fine details are there. And then on top of everything, I just added the fast blur because the displacement gave me a little bit of a rough look here. I took the whole layer, converted it to the multiply blend mode and lower its opacity. Basically, you can lower the opacity from here, but since the transform also have an opacity slider here or opacity value, I choose to do it from here. So all the transformation will be in one place. Okay, so now we have our guy here, our biker here. Let's just zoom back and let's introduce the ship here. So the ship 
is very, very simple. We already did everything that we need. I'm just going to, once again, zoom out a little bit. Same idea here. I took the clip, converted it to a 3D layer, add curves and level just to match up the colors and gave it very simple move basically on its X and a little bit on the Z position. So the combination of the two is already starting to look very promising. But we want to make it a little bit better. So first let's not forget that we did have some kind of birds in our storyboard. For that I choose this clip. Let me just show you it here without the masks. So this clip, we can see a flock of birds just traveling around the screen. Very calming. A few birds are flying in the opposite direction. This clip was very easy to integrate as well. First, I just mask the part that I need, edit some feather in order for it to integrate a little bit better. Then let's come back to the scene here. Open the eye for it. Press U just in order to see the keyframes. And of course, there are two keyframes as well for the birds. So the birds themselves are moving from one to the other. And I tried my best so those two birds here will look like as if they are coming from maybe under these clouds or something like this. So in the final movie, you might notice that there is some kind of a mismatch here in the bird section. But I think that overall, it looks quite convincing. Of course, to get the transparency or to remove the sky from the birds layer, I made sure that this layer will be in the multiply blend mode. So only the dark pixels are visible on the new sky that we have here. Next step was to add some cracks in the ground. And this is very easy actually to do. What you need to do is duplicate once again the desert layer. And this is what I did here. I duplicated the desert layer. And then I applied a mask and two effects. First, I will dismiss the effects here. Enable this. And we will just look at the final result at the crack. I will press Command Shift H to hide the mask. And as you saw, I just drew a simple shape, a simple mask. What makes it look a little bit more believable is the fact that to this layer, I added under layer style, the inner shadow layer style. So if I'm going to open it up in the timeline, you will see that there is an inner shadow layer style here. The blend bond is multiply. I raise the opacity to 85, change the distance a little bit and this is just something which I eyeballed. So there is no definitive numbers. Everything should match according to what you are working on. And of course I created a sufficient size so it will look like there is some kind of a hole in the ground. So this looks all right. I did it by the way at the last frame here. So I just wanted to make sure that everything from here backwards will work nice. So this is the way I worked. Now it does look a little bit synthetic. So I added the roughen edges effect, which basically take the layer and just make it a little bit more dirty. And you can work with this as much as you like. I ended up with this value. Now in order to reveal it, once the ship is moving across the screen, I just use a simple linear wipe effect, which means that this layer, the cracked layer, is basically just wiping itself in, timed to the ship movement. And that's it almost. The last step was to create a shadow for the ship. Same idea, more or less, as the uh, shadow for the cycler. Uh, except that for this instance, instead of using the transform effect, I actually went with the CC slant effect, which give you basically both in one. It gives you the transformation and also the color. So it will actually save you a little bit if you don't need to do any rotation 
for the shadow, which I had to do for the biker shadow, for the cycler shadow. So the arrangements are quite the same. The CC slant effect, I will play with the height a little bit so you can see how it looks like. So this is it. And this is just to smooth out where the two layers are meeting. There is no animation here. Once again, I've added the displacement map effect. Okay, so this is without the displacement map. And here in this example, it's actually contributing a little bit more than at the previous one. And of course, at the end of it, I just thought that a little bit of blur is in place. And basically, that's it. So let's move to full screen now and create a final round preview to see everything combined together. So hopefully you will join me on part two, which will, will take this scene and arrange it in a living room of a couple and then we will end up with our final spot. Until then, I hope you gather a few ideas from this uh, presentation. And on behalf of Artbeats.com, this is Eran from Sternfix, wishing you a great sunny creative day.